Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be building ourselves a video surveillance system using the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Before we begin, I do want to talk about the hardware before we talk about the software. This way you know what I'm going to be using for this entire setup and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. But first, a word from my sponsor, Private Internet Access. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they up that, they put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime, I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access so not only do they have a 30-day money back guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose so what i'm going to be using today as the command center you would say is the raspberry pi 4 4 gigabyte version now i do recommend using anything above two gigabytes that's because the motion eye software that we're going to be using does require a little bit more ram if you're planning to start transferring files at ftp and all that other stuff so two gigs would be recommended i would say i'm also going to be attaching the raspberry pi 4 to the raspberry pi hq camera module so i would have better video footage and you could also interchange the lens to a wide angle or a focused or whatever you want to use so i'm going to be using this high quality lens on that Next up, we have the Raspberry Pi Zero as another location. And I'm gonna be using the old camera module for this, but it's on a Raspberry Pi Zero. And this doesn't require much, so I'm gonna be using a four gigabyte SD card on this as well. And last but not least, uh, we're also gonna be attaching an IP camera, stuff that you could buy from any retail store. So we're gonna be attaching three different modules onto this guy, and I'm gonna show you how to get the storage working and everything so we would have everything to one central location. So let's jump to the software now. Now, as far as the software we're gonna be using is called Motion iOS, and this has been around for quite some time now. It's only been a lot better actually recently because of the Raspberry Pi 4 with more RAM to be used. Back then when it was using Raspberry Pi 3 or the Raspberry Pi Zero, we would struggle because there was lack there of RAM. And when you start to do anything intensive, it would kind of like crash. But now it's gotten a lot better because of that. Next up, uh, this also supports more than not just the Raspberry Pi. You could actually use a bunch of boards for this. And if you go to their main website, it will have it on their GitHub or you just follow these links, which will also lead to their GitHub. So this is their GitHub page and there's not much to see here but you do need to notice the release version over here and i will leave a link down to all this stuff down in the description below this is the installation process and you could actually just write the image using your own thing or i'm going to be using raspberry pi imager for this but you could see if i go to supported devices um, you have banana pi nano pi odroid a bunch of boards that you could do this on not just the raspberry pi now if you are using the raspberry pi zero you will need this particular image because this works for the compute module zero and all the other ones while Raspberry Pi 4 needs its own image here. Now heading over to the release page, they do have the dev version, which 
came out like I think about two months ago, which is not too bad, but I actually opted out to use the standard release version right over here. And again, just download the regular Raspberry Pi for your zero and the Raspberry Pi 4 for your four image. And you can see it's only like 50 megabytes. It's not big. First of all, I'm gonna be flashing the Raspberry Pi 4 and I have a 32 gigabyte SD card. Um, I would recommend actually going higher if you can because that's where you're gonna be storing all the footage. So I am gonna do, where is it? Raspberry Pi Imager. I have not tested this on hard drive. Um, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure you could hook up a hard drive to it but don't quote me on that because I didn't try it on a hard drive, but it would make sense too. Now you see, I have already the two files. This doesn't have a four in it. So I'm gonna be clicking on this one and this one has the Raspberry Pi four. Okay, choose the SD card, 32 gigabyte and write. And this will erase everything on that. Pop in my password. And you see how it's quick because it's only a very small file. It's actually based off build root. So it's really fast when it boots up. It has barely nothing only the operating system and the functions that it needs. So within, what, 20, 30 seconds, I already flashed the image over to here. And uh, that is it. Now I'm gonna remove the SD card from this and pop it into my Raspberry Pi 4 for now. But while we have the screen up, we are also gonna flash Raspberry Pi 0. Now Raspberry Pi 0 does have a little bit of a, um, a configuration to set up because we have to pre-configure the wireless. So I'm gonna pop in the SD card, which is the four gigabyte change this image nope don't need to read that change this image over to this one which doesn't have the four open choose sd card four gigabyte write yes this will take a little bit longer because it's a slower sd card you could tell the writing speed already it's it's a little bit slower which doesn't matter it's it's going to be fine it runs just as well all right we are done what i do need to do is unplug this and pop it back in so I can see the partitions. Now, if you don't do this step before you first boot, you're gonna have to reflash it because it only happens once. So I'm gonna go to this Wi-Fi pre-configure on their GitHub and I'm gonna need to copy this, okay? So let me open up the image and I should be able to see this. There you go. This is the boot volume for the Raspberry Pi Zero. And in here, I would have to create a new file called WPA supplicant.config and I'm gonna edit this and pop in that information. Now this you would have to change to your password, your Wi-Fi, and the file gets deleted after you boot it up the first time. It actually gets moved to the correct location where it's supposed to be. So you just have to pop in here and change all your Wi-Fi information. All right, once everything is saved and you have everything you need, uh, we are ready to boot up the Raspberry Pi Zero as well as the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm gonna hook this up onto my Pi KVM. This way you guys could see the console mode on what happens when it boots up from scratch. All right, here we go. So it's booting up. And uh, this is the first time it's booting up on the Raspberry Pi 4. I didn't hook up the Raspberry Pi Zero yet. I will do that in a minute. There we have it. Now, if you take a look at this, it'll actually give you your private IP over here. So I don't have to search my router for the IP address. It just prints it on the main screen. And if I hop over there, it will bring me over to all right, so here we go. It basically starts up this way. Uh, the password is admin blank. And I kind of have it as much as focused as I can because it's kind of hard to adjust when I'm sitting so far away. But yeah, this is the first camera that is on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, before I attach the other cameras, what I do want to do is change one setting onto this. Now, you pop in over here and you can see there's nothing I can do. Um, let me log in. So admin and there's no password. And I could go over here and configure all the settings I want. First, what I wanna do is obviously change the password, you should do that, but I am gonna change um, services. And in here, it has Samba server and write support is disabled. I am gonna enable that because that's gonna allow us to write the files from the other locations to this central command center that I'm talking about. So while this is rebooting, I am gonna plug in my Raspberry Pi Zero and let that configure itself in the beginning. All right. Now that it's rebooted and I plugged in my Raspberry Pi Zero, I'm gonna pop in over here, make sure everything is uh, working again, and switch over to my Raspberry Pi Zero. Now at this rate, uh, you could actually plug the Raspberry Pi Zero to a monitor so you can see what IP address is, or you could go into your router and find out what the Raspberry Pi Zero IP is. For me, I have an idea what it is already because I use this for something else and I do have it mapped to a certain IP, which is 130 on this Raspberry Pi Zero. So 
I'm going to pop over here and you can see that it's literally right in front of me. That's, that's a good sign. Now in here, while I am here, I'm going to keep this open, but I am going to change the name of this camera so it doesn't conflict with the other camera because they're both named camera one. So I'm going to pop in and say admin. Let me move this a little bit over here. I am going to change the camera name, which I believe is this here. And I'm going to call this uh, zero. Click off of that, hit apply. That's going to change the name. And now we could attach this over to our central hub. I'm going to keep calling the central hub, even though I don't know what I should call it. So I'm going to pop over here and get back into the settings. And as soon as you see the settings, there's not much I could see here for adding a camera. It actually took me a little bit just to remember how to do this. And to add a camera, you click this little drop down and click add camera. Now I'm not going to add a local camera, which I can, I could actually add another webcam or whatever I want but I am going to add a remote motion eye camera. And in here, we have the IP address that we need to put in. That 105, that 130, and the password is admin, admin. And as soon as you click off of it, oh, not HTTPS, sorry about that, HTTP. And as soon as you click off of it, it already knows what camera it's going to be on, which is cam camera zero, and that's the one we named it. Hit OK. And it's going to add that camera onto this central base. You see now I have two cameras going on. Now for the third camera, uh, which is this IP camera that we're going to be adding, I have one hooked up upstairs and we're going to add that as well now. So I'm going to go to add camera and this is going to be a network camera. Now most cameras support this protocol called RTSP and make sure if you're going to buy a camera like this, that it does have that protocol. In most cases it does. So what I'm going to be using is R. TSP colon slash slash the IP address of that camera and then it's 554 for that port and we have the username and then the password and in here it should be able to just pick it up let's see and there we have it this is going to be my third camera and it should be pointed into my living room The only downside to using these type of cameras, which is the 360 motion type thing, you can't control it through this system. You would have to actually log in manually to this guy and then you could change the angles and stuff like that. But it does keep an eye on what's going on. So my living room, this Raspberry Pi Zero camera and that Raspberry Pi 4 with the camera module is now all hooked up. Now to get the storage working, we would have to go over to our main zero device to attach the storage. Now, if I was to go into the network location, network that location, and it should be called, well, it's not called anything. It's just 192.168.105.122. And you see how there's SD card and storage. You gotta make a note of this called SD card. And in here, I can, I'm gonna connect with the password. Now that I'm able to get into this, you see there's a camera one and camera three. And because this is using a RTSP, this will automatically save everything to my Raspberry Pi. So I don't really have to configure the camera three anymore. But the Raspberry Pi zero is the one that I have to configure, which is the other motion eye device. Now I can't just go in here and configure the camera two, even though if I could click on camera zero and set up some settings, I can't activate this option through here. I would have to manually go back to the 130, which is my camera, my Raspberry Pi Zero camera, and set it up through here instead. So basically what I'm gonna do is go over to file storage, and instead of custom path, I'm gonna change this to network share. Uh, network server will be my IP address of the Raspberry Pi 4. And SMB protocol, you do not wanna use one, so you could use three. And the share name is SD card. Remember we were looking at that before, which is right over here, SD card. Username is admin, and you do need to set up a password for this. Well, you have to set up the password for the main guy just to get this to work. What you have to do as far as the root directory goes, it says data, then output, then camera zero. This is relevant. I'm gonna show you why we needed to put data slash output. So now that I tested the share and it works, I'm just gonna hit apply. And anything that I set over here will be sent over to my Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, I know I'm bouncing a little bit back and forth, but this is the only way to do it. So now that I'm, I'm, I just switched back over to the Raspberry Pi 4, as you can see, there's three cameras over here. The reason why I had to call that data output, because that's how they named their root folder, data output and then slash camera. 
And then in here, I will be able to reach over to that camera zero. Popping back into the settings and camera one, I'm just gonna take a look at the motion detection. Now it is enabled by default and you can set the sensitivity on here and how you want it to play, how long the gap is, all this stuff. Remember to take a look at their um, instructions because it gives you a little bit more detail on how to configure and what you want. But you do have to also enable movies. Now once you enable this, it will save the motion detection into that folder over here in the camera. So you see how it's motion triggered, that's the recording mode, or you could do it like continuous. It'll continuously record, maximum length, how long you want to preserve it, and that all depends on how much space you got. Now, if you only have 32 gigs of space, then you might want to only preserve it for about a week. And if you have more space than that, then you could preserve it for a little bit longer. And keep in mind, if you're doing three cameras, it's going to be more. So there's also a frame rate to account for. Now, the frame rate is slow on this one. It's about five frames per second, which you can adjust. But again, if you adjust that, that means the file size are gonna be a little bit bigger. And that all depends on how you wanna play around with it. I'm gonna hit apply over here and it should just take effect on camera one because I didn't set the other ones yet. But the idea is the same. You just have to go through each camera on how you wanna set it up, what, how sensitive you want the motion detection to be. Yeah, and then if you pop over to the SD card again with the network address and you can do this on Windows or any other operating system, um, when you hit over to camera one, I'm not going to see anything now because I'm not triggering anything and maybe I should have just set it to instead of motion trigger continuous recording. Let me hit apply on that and you should see files start spawning over here on camera one because my camera one should just continuously record and there we have it. So now it makes a date of today's date and it has one recording. We can't watch it yet, but it splits it up into a couple of minutes. So every few minutes it would have a file, every few minutes it would have a file. So it has that continuous recording and it gives you the date. But that's basically about it. I mean, setting it up wasn't too hard, but it gives you a full surveillance solution and you can add as much cameras as you want, especially if you're gonna build it off the Raspberry Pi Zero. They're actually very, very affordable. I mean. The Raspberry Pi Zero W is $10, then you get the camera module on top of that, then an SD card, well, the smallest you could find because you really don't need much space on there. And you have yourself a little camera module. You could hook it up to a power bank and then charge that power bank so this way, even if you lose power, the cameras will st be, still be going on. Anyway, uh, that's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, I will try my best to answer them. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.